Hello, I welcome you all in this uh, presentation related with the subject joining technologies for the metals. Uh, in this presentation, I will be talking about basically the two, uh, the solid liquid based joining processes. Uh, these are commonly known as uh, shouldering and brazing. Uh, so, uh, related with these uh, two processes, we will be talking about the, the basic principle of these processes, steps, uh, the materials which are used uh, like the fillers and the fluxes, uh, thereafter comparison between the two like shouldering and the brazing and along with the application of the two processes where these are uh, used. So, as name suggests these uh, processes fall in category of solid liquid based joining processes. Why are these called so? Because uh, the base metals to be joined are kept in solid state means uh, they remain in solid state like 1 and solid 2. While the, the material which is used for uh, developing the joint between these two is brought to the molten state which is called either braze material or shoulder as per the kind of the process to be used. So, brazing material or the shoulder uh, that is why. So, here in this case heating only, only heating is involved there is no fusion of the base metal and heat which is required for uh, melting the filler metal is also very limited. So, the heat input is low in these processes. So, these are the two very attractive feature and uh, because of these two only it offers many advantages like absence of the fusion and very low heat input requirements for developing the joint between the two systems. And this benefit is exploited in number of situations. For example, for all those cases where the components like 1 and 2 have the metallurgical incompatibility, incompatibility. So, if uh, the after the fusion, if the two forms unfavorable things uh, and lead which lead to the formation of the very poor joint strengths like if one and two are fused together and if they are metallurgically incompatible, the kind of joint which is formed is uh, very poor in terms of the strength or ability to sustain the service conditions for long. So, uh, it will not survive or it may get cracked immediately, it may get damaged immediately as per uh, as early as the joint is developed. So, this kind of situation wherever the joint is to be made between the two systems or the two components in solid state which are metallurgically incompatible with each other. Another is those metals which have the poor weldability means they can be fused, but when the joint is made the kind of properties that we obtain are poor like this. The two components to be joined having the poor weldability when they are fused either it will result in lot of porosity in the weld or cracks in the weld or in the heat affected zone, heat affected zone either is very soft end or very much hard end. So, lot of welding related issues are involved in the joining of the metals, such kind of metals using the fusion welding processes, then they will be considered as a poor weldability and better to join them using the 
solid liquid based processes like brazing and shouldering. Another is odd position welds, odd position welds like if uh, the molten metal cannot sustain there in uh, during the posi odd position welding then it is always good to make uh, the joint uh, using such kind of processes like brazing and shouldering which will allow uh, just the heating of the base metal and melting of the uh, filler metal uh, for developing the uh, uh, well joint uh, for developing the joint between the components then uh, there is like completely different combination is to be developed uh, like entirely different combination is to be brought in uh, for example like glass and aluminum or completely any other thing which uh, where the, the the physical and the mechanical characteristics of the two systems are completely different so they, they can be joined together using this uh, using these uh, brazing and soldering process another uh, suitable area wherever the loading conditions loading conditions during the service as well as the temperature conditions to be experienced by the joint is very limited very less there these kind of the joints like shoulder joints and the brazing joints are found to be very useful. So, uh, these are the, uh, the, the benefits which are exploited due to the unique feature which is associated with the brazing and shouldering that uh, it involves just heating of the base metals and melting of the filler metal for development of the joint. Limited heat input ensures that uh, metallurgically incompatible poor weldability metals can be joined effectively for development of the joint. The, as far as the process principle is concerned and the process is concerned here, what we will do the components mainly the two types of the joints are made. The most common one is the lap joint configuration and sometimes even butt joint can be made for those cases, but for making the butt joint uh, sometimes bevelling is in which especially tried so that uh, the required joint strength can be achieved. As far as the lap joint is concerned, the plates or the sheets to be joined are kept in lap joint configuration and a particular gap between the plates and the sheets to be joined is maintained which is called clearance. This clearance plays a very big role for successful brazing and uh, uh, soldering and this is kept like 0 0.075 to 0 0.1. 25 mm uh, because this gap ensures that uh, whenever the brazing or shouldering material is brought to the molten state by the application of external heat this molten uh, shoulder or brazing material uh, will be sucked in inside the gap between the fing surfaces of the component to be joined and by the capillary action so capillary action will be effective only if the two conditions are there the 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 molten filler is very thin of less viscosity one and the fing surfaces fing surfaces means the surfaces of the component being joined are very clean fing surfaces are clean enough. So, these must be the surfaces must be free from free from impurities uh, like dust, dirt, oil, grease etcetera. So, proper cleaning is needed of the surfaces to be joined and the gap is maintained once the, the, the plates prepared properly proper gap is maintained, heat is applied, once it has become hot the filler metal is applied, filler metal either brazing or soldering material will be brazing or soldering material will be uh, brought to the molten state. So, it will be sucked in by the capillary action between the components, 
it will be sucked only if it is thin enough and uh, less viscous and uh, having very clean surfaces if the proper gap is maintained. So, gap thinness of the material as well as proper cleaning of the fin surface are very crucial for uniform distribution, uniform distribution of both shoulder as well as brazing material. If it gets uniformly distributed, then the proper joint strength is achieved. If it is left some of the places, then that area will be left unjoined and the joint strength will be poor in that case. So, proper surface preparation is very crucial for developing the, uh, the good weld joints. So, here as far as the steps are concerned, first the surface preparation with the proper cleaning preparation. The second is uh, uh, the placement with the proper gap, third is application of the heat, then the filler and uh, is brought to the molten state melting and then the distribution by the capillary action, distribution by capillary action. And, uh, and they followed by the solidification. Once the solidification is completed, uh, the joint is prepared or joint is ready. Uh, but uh, we know that the, so, despite of the proper cleaning, uh, uh, some of if the, some of the impurities are left at the surfaces, uh, the molten filler, molten filler will be able to interact with the gases in air or uh, like impurities present on the surface. So, these two things must be taken care of properly uh, and for that purpose the impurities and the, the kind of compounds which are formed by reaction between the filler and the atmospheric gases like in form of oxides, the fluxes are used. So, fluxes are also applied or placed beforehand uh, 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 when the filler metal is placed so that the flux also melts along with the filler metal and it uh, works effectively in a uh, number of ways. So, the application of the flux uh, namely maybe in form of like paste powders uh, which is applied and then uh, this flux uh, after melting uh, does number of things like it lowers the surface tension of the filler metal, it, uh, uh, it uh, avoids the oxidation of the filler and uh, so uh, surface tension is reduced it helps in making uh, it helps in making the uh, means improves the improves the capillary action uh, in a, a better distribution and uh, the flux also uh, interacts with the impurities to form slag. So, formation of uh, slag by reaction with the impurities. So, flux will be reacting with the impurities and uh, the slag. Uh, flux will be reacting with the impurities to form slag and this slag being li lighter uh, is removed from the surface. So, this is uh, about um, the butt joint configuration. Uh, we know that uh, th this is about the lap joint configuration and we know that if uh, the butt joint is to be made for a particular application, then for that purpose different uh, uh, some special arrangement must be made in order to achieve the desired joint strength. And uh, for that say if uh, this is the sheet uh, to be joined in simple butt joint configuration this area will be very less in order to offer the joint strength. Uh, so, 
in, in, in such situation normally bevelling of the surface is, is carried out. So, the surface area increases and then we will see that uh, the filler is placed between these uh, uh, between these uh, uh, between the fixed surfaces for developing the brace or shoulder joints. Alternatively, another kind of configuration of this kind also can be made wherein uh, the opposite uh, uh, corresponding surface will be like this and between these uh, we can place the brace or the filler joint. So, these are the butt joint configuration will be able to carry the uh, tensile load as well. So, in order to offer in order to increase the uh, the joint a area the is uh, the the bewailing or a special or single or double bewailing arrangements can be made in order to increase the joint area so that the load carrying capacity of the joint can be increased. Now, uh, there are various uh, points based on which we can compare bracing as well as uh, shoulder joints. Uh, for example, uh, shoulder joints or uh, uh, shoulders, uh, soldering is uh, performed like say this is for soldering, obviously the shoulder mainly the lead and a tin based alloy is used and for the brazing purpose uh, like alloys of copper, aluminum and nickel systems are used. They offer somewhat uh, uh, these uh, systems melt at a higher temperature say 450 to 800 degree centigrade and uh, this one is used for the lower temperature conditions like 187 to the 270 5 degree centigrade. So, uh, the lead and tin uh, are the low temperature systems and uh, uh, means the shoulders this is called shoulder uh, low temperature systems uh, melts at very low temperature these are these melt at very high temperature. So, for the brazing purpose we definitely need higher heat input as compared to the shouldering which requires low heat input because of the difference in the melting point and uh, since the, the shoulders uh, they have the low uh, melting point. So, these offer very low strength as well as the low temperature uh, tolerance capability means they cannot work at a higher temperature with the increase and in higher temperature they get soft and strength is reduced. So, the joint load carrying capability is very adversely affected. So, these are good for very low light load service conditions at low temperature and these are good enough for the means high they have high they offer high strength and reasonably moderate temperature service conditions, moderate temperature service conditions under which these can work. So, these are used for like say developing the joints for the tubes or uh, uh, like carbide uh, brazed tools and these are mainly used for the electronic applications where the loading conditions where the joint is primarily made for the flow of current not for the in load carrying capacity not for increasing uh, not for carrying the load. So, the shoulders are primarily used for the electronic applications while the bracing joints are used where moderately higher load carrying capacity is required or uh, the higher service uh, temperature conditions also can be sustained by the bracing joints. So, these are the uh, kind of uh, uh, some comparison points apart from this uh, uh, we will see that uh, the different uh, points on which these uh, can be compared is uh, uh, these are the heat source. So, that is it. So, based on the heat source requirement very light heat source like shouldering iron is sufficient for this purpose. 
because very limited heat is required for developing the weld joints, but very high heat is needed for the larger amount of heat is needed for the brazing purpose. So, we need uh, the special sources of heat may be like the gas flame or induction brazing, there are various brazing methods. So, these brazing methods basically uh, for the brazing there are various ways by which heat can be applied at the thing surfaces, so that the, the brazing uh, material can be brought to the molten state. Similarly, the different sources of the heat can be used for the soldering purpose and according to the method being used for the for application of the heat uh, either for brazing or soldering the methods are described accordingly like uh, so uh, some of the methods I will be talking uh, here along with the filler materials which are used for the uh, uh, brazing as well as shouldering. Now, we will see here in addition to uh, uh, this comparison, there are certain uh, negatives also related with these processes and uh, the negative aspects related with the brazing and the shouldering primarily include includes uh, from the inherent feature related with these two processes. So, the limitation one includes that the strength if you see the base metals are kept intact in the solid state while the filler is brought to the molten state. So, the strength of the joint, so the joint strength is lower always lower than the base uh, for uh, then, then the base metal. Uh, so, the limited strength is one weakness of the, the brazing and shouldering process. Another is they cannot sustain the higher temperatures, temperature likes. So, good for moderate and low temperature conditions only. Uh, they cannot sustain the higher temperature. Sometimes uh, the, the brazing and filler material, the, the shoulder and the brazing materials uh, becomes of the different colors. So, the color mismatch, color mismatch in uh, the braze and shoulder joint is another problem because it adversely affects the uh, steam value of the joint and sometimes uh, the dissimilar metals. Uh, promotes the corrosion. Additionally, uh, it becomes important for cleaning of the cleaning of all fluxes whatever has been used. So, the flux cleaning like uh, the fluxes like borax, borax and boric acid are commonly used uh, the fluxes and these must be cleaned uh, after the shouldering or the brazing. So, that uh, uh, if these are not cleaned properly after the soldering then because of uh, their corrosion in corrosive in nature these uh, uh, fluxes are corrosive in nature. So, they will be uh, promoting the corrosion of the joints as well as of the base metal. So, it is important that uh, the fluxes after the application are cleaned and uh, um, uh, removed properly after developing the joint. Now, we will see some of the specific metal systems which are used for developing the weld joints as well as the kind of uh, the arrangements which are uh, arrangement which is used for like for the brazing and soldering purpose the plates are kept like this with a certain gap and the heat source is applied and uh, thereafter the flux and the filler is placed once it is brought to the molten state. Uh, the, the flux, flux uh, sorry filler spreads between the fing surfaces and after the solidification it results in the joint formation of the joint. So, the cl clearance uh, is extremely important for having the capillary action in order to ensure the uniform distribution of the filler material between the fing surfaces. Preparation of the plates is important to make it free from the impurities, so that proper capillary action can be ensured and uh, for making the bud joints some edge preparation is important in order to increase the contact area between the plates to be joined, so that the joint can be made of the sufficient 
strength. These are the different points based on which bridging and shouldering can be compared like melting point of filler, it is lower for the shouldering and then the bridging. Strength of the brace joint is much higher than that of the shoulder joints and ability to withstand high temperature is good for the bracing as compared to the shouldering, better for the bracing um, joints as compared to the shouldering joints and heat source requirement means more uh, high capacity heat source is needed for the bracing purpose as compared to the shouldering purpose and according to their load carrying capacity or ability to sustain the higher temperature, these find different, uh, uh, the, these two processes find applications in the different areas. So, this is just the comparison purpose. Limitation of these processes, these are poor in strength, inability to withstand high temperature and sometimes color mismatch is also another problem which is encountered. These are the kind of the materials which are used for the brazing purpose, brazing temperature and corresponding filler materials which are used. Like for the nickel copper systems, it is 11, 20 degree centigrade, stainless steel and nickel systems are braced uh, and uh, AU and AG system 950 is the temperature of brazing and stainless steel and uh, nickel systems are braced like steel and cast iron, copper zinc systems, copper phosphorus for copper systems, copper for nickel and copper systems, aluminum silicon for aluminum systems. Uh, these are uh, the different uh, purposes for which uh, 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 fluxes are used. It uh, takes care of the surface contaminants, oxides, oil greases, oxidation of the base metal, oxidation of the filler and fluidity of the molten metal. So, all the oxidation and the grease and oxides and contaminants are taken care of while the fluidity is improved by the filler. The fluxes helps to dissolve the oxides from the fing surfaces, reduce surface tension in order to improve the fluidity and uh, these protect the base metal and the molten metal filler from the oxidation during the joining operation. The common fluxes which are used are borax, boric acid and uh, these are uh, uh, the fluxes uh, commonly used with the brazing. Uh, for the brazing purpose with the copper fillers and the, these fluxes can be used in the form of paste or the solutions or the powders, they can be applied over the surface. So, now here I will conclude the presentation. In this presentation, uh, basically I have talked the basic principle of the solid liquid based processes like brazing and soldering and uh, the conditions under which these uh, processes can be used effectively, the basic principle of these related with these processes and the kind of material systems which are used for the brazing operations. Thank you for your attention.